What's up? What's up? What's up? We back. We back. We back. This is all hustle. No fear. I'm your girl, Sunshine Reigns. And in the building right now with me, I have got some of the dopest people in Atlanta. And the reason why I say that is because creative people keep the world moving. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for creative people right now, I swear to God, all of y'all would have jumped off the side of the world when the pandemic started. We the creative saved the pandemic. Yes. We we and creatives saved the pandemic. If it wasn't for us or for them, I swear to God, y'all wouldn't have made it through this damn thing. All them doggone flat earthers would have found a waterfall and jumped off. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laugh, but I really didn't say that. Oh shit! <laughs> In real life, I did it because not only is my mom a flat earther, but after I married him, my husband told me he's a flat earther. So I'm surrounded by these niggas. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we've got some people in the building, and I want to go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you because I have a feeling they're going to say some dope shit. This ain't just going to be names. They're they going to they drop it in. So who, who do we start with? Uh, I don't know. You already like set the bar so high. <laughs> you know what I'm I was just about to say my name. That's it. That's it. Okay, no, no, no. You gotta do something. Okay, watch. See, we start the show with, "Hey, how y'all doing today?" I'm Sunshine Rains, aka Griselda Blanca, aka You Need a Bar. <laughs> <laughs> but you can call me the Hood Unicorn. And then the first one, nicknames. I know. Right? Yeah, I'm this, not even all <laughs> In the building with me, we have Alex in Wonderland. That's right. She will take you down that rabbit hole <laughs> and play with you. <laughs> to my right, <laughs> I have. Yeah. I don't have that many nicknames. <laughs> I, right? I am Dane Brown, a.k.a. Com- oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I am a uh, Jamaican born American. Uh, Bronx raised, Atlanta living artist, and I am uh, one third of the art crew. Okay, okay. And to his right, we have. Yeah, um, I'm Velasco. No nicknames either. You know, <laughs> just playing all. You know, I'm originally from St. Lucia. You know, been in Atlanta. I think I moved to Atlanta in 2012, I believe. But I've been in the U.S. I was in Valosa State for a little bit, and yeah, I'm one third of art crew. Okay, okay. And we have in the building to his right. That is right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah. I'm Amara. Um, I'm from Florida. You know what I'm saying about people from Florida. Y'all agree. It's true. <laughs> it's the water. It's the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. You said Jamaica, and then wherever you from, you sound like you stab people with speed. <laughs> And I'm from Florida. I'm a swamp state with Fiji to the Gators. <laughs> so look, Florida, Florida, this long. What part of Florida? Tampa, Florida. Oh, yeah. yeah. 813-727, Wit City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got lots of Gators. We got lots of crackheads. We got lots of bath salts. All that. Yo, Florida got some of the craziest drugs. Mm-hmm. Because people, like you seen that dude who just was eating folks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, have y'all ever played that game where you type in your birthday and your birth year and you put in Florida man? Oh, no. and you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's a it's a game. You type in your birthday and your and, and the year and type in Florida man. I swear to God, it's so crazy. I'm, I'm, not, surprised. Crazy yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Every day in Florida, it's slump. Something going it's on. Something going on. <laughs> so, for the people who don't know what Art Crew ATL is, for the people who are under a rock, for the people who have no co- them uncultured swine, <laughs> how would you guys describe Art Art Crew? Well, so we're a collective. We started out as a group of artists, just displaying our art throughout the city. We're also vendors, business owners. So we vend, we sell our merchandise throughout the city. And we saw that there was really a, there was a missing point in the market for 
there was a lack of professionalism. There was a lack of organization. You know, we would pay this money to display our art. And it was like, we, we paid money to display our art. And then we show up and the venue is an apartment. And, and, you know, like 10 people show up. And it's like, what, what, what am I going to do with that? The music's too loud. I can't even talk to people. So after having multiple interactions like this, we were, we basically decided, you know, why don't we come together? We can do something better, you know? So we came together. We had our first show in November of 2020. We had upwards of 300, over 300 people showed up to our first one. And we actually have not had less than 250 people show up to one of our events. And um, we've pretty much been monthly, bi-monthly since then. Um, I think we've had the show of, what, 16, 17 16, 17? Yeah. I know, that's not bad. So, uh, yeah. We're established. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're somebody. We're established. So our biggest thing is we're, we're for artists, by artists, for the culture, by the culture. And we stand on that. We stand on integrity, respect, and professionalism. Because a lot of times that's missing in the arts and creative community. So we wanted to establish that, having a sense of professionalism. I don't know what it is about, like, the creative and art scene, why we can't be professionals at the same time. Professionalism is a okay. form of... Uh, <laughs> professionalism is a form of respect. Okay. 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 Not art crew, but what brought you to art? You know what I'm saying? Because I can't draw a stick thing. Yeah. And, and what is your medium? Okay. Okay. So, well, she yeah. already got a chance. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I, I think, like, I've always been artistic. Just growing up, I've always been pretty good at um, sketching stuff like that. I did, like, cartoons, Dragon Ball Z, stuff really? like that okay. is what I kind of used to do um, growing up. And then, you know, I just kind of kept with it. It's always just been a hobby. My focus in terms of school has always been more on the science side of things. You know, to me, art kind of came naturally, so I never really took classes for it. And then um, that's what I went to school for, actually, for science and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what I do full time, you know, my profession and stuff like that. But I always kept wait, up wait, with wait, art. No, 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 don't roll over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my science is perfect. My, my profession is science. Wait, <laughs> osmosis? Like, what part of it? <laughs> Medical company. I don't want to say their name, oh, no, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> but I, I work for a biomedical company. We do um, medical devices, so stuff like uh, heart valves, stuff like that. Oh, you okay. know, along along the lines of those. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. I, I, like I that. just watched 15 season of ER. Yeah, she just, oh, okay. I just okay. Yeah, I just graduated. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so that's what I went to school for, and that's what I do full time. But I always kept up with art. And my mom, she's a seamstress. You know, she does everything, wedding dresses, the whole nine. So she's always like, keep up with the artwork, keep up with the art, you know. And then that's kind of what brought me to the art scene in Atlanta. So, you know, I came up here. Um, I did sip and paint classes part time just to kind of get back into the art. And then I heard about art shows. I didn't even know about that, you know, till 2019. And then when I kind of heard about art shows, and I started doing art events. You know, just getting immersed in this, in the art community within the city and stuff like that. Met up with artists and stuff. And, you know, this is kind of how we met at art mm -hmm. shows. And that's kind of how we met each other. And then, like she was saying, there's kind of a void in the market, at least from our perspective. But it's like, you know, you're asking artists to pay to come to your event. And they might not even reimburse what they put in, you know. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you're constantly doing events, it's like every month, I'm like, hey, could you come into, you know, come to our events? It's almost like a bill every month. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you have to kind of cover that cost and it's like, you don't recoup that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we try our best to promote the events, get as many people in there 
you know, we won't guarantee that you will sell. That's up to you, but we guarantee we'll bring enough people here, you know, to at least give it an opportunity, you know, get your work seen by as many people as possible. And it's up to you as an artist, market yourself, you know, right. and stuff like that. So, and yeah, that's how I came on the arts, you know, we started Art Crew. And yeah, we just constantly try to progress from here. This, you know, every event, we always feel like we could do better. And we try to improve every time, you know, people coming in like, oh, this was amazing. But as artists, you know, yeah, you, you always know, try to be did. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was the experience in the beginning where people were, you know, coming in in the middle of the event trying to set up. And, yeah, we had to have a cutoff time and stuff. So, yeah, as we progress, you know, we learn stuff along the way. We're all new to the business side of this. We're all we're artists more on the expression side, creative side. Now it's like, okay, there's a business aspect as well. But we still try to keep the creative aspect right hand in hand, you know. So what is your medium? So I use a uh, broken glass acrylic and i recently started experimenting with uh wood burning and that's, that's just you that was oh that was me yeah yeah <laughs> Me and my cousin, yeah, and my shirt caught on fire. Oh. And yeah, it was, I tried to take it off, but no, it was just too hot. So I just like beat my chest and stuff like that. You know, when I took my shirt off, the skin was attached. Yeah. Ah. It, was, it was pretty bad. I mean, there's no scars now. It was like third degree. But yeah, I was like, man. So how did you get into, well, what do you call it? How, what, what do you... Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, my... No, no, no. Say, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> I'm still practicing it, so don't yeah. take my pronunciation. But it's, it's okay. My tongue's fat too. Pyrography. 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 Yeah. 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 She, she but no, I saw Dan actually. He was yeah. doing it, but he does a little bit different. You know, he does kind of like a solder iron type thing. He yeah. does. Yeah. I do. I do. We kind of mirror a little With bit. A blow yeah. That's what no, you talking no, about. No, no, no. no he doesn't do use a blowtorch. So yeah. They need a tool and and use the tip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Yeah. No, okay. So that's, yeah. that's burning, yes. Yeah. Okay. Basically, yeah. I don't burn myself. Less <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> fire and uh, more hot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You fire. So far, yeah, I, I just got the idea based off of what I saw him doing, and then we were doing an event with Bonfire ATL at the time. So I was like, oh, art by the fire. I was like, man, I want to try to utilize the flame to create a piece. That was the first time I ever did it, to be honest. That Tunchi piece. Yeah. The first time I ever worked with fire. Yeah. And I just like, you know, let me just try it out. I was experimenting that day. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. And I just kind of kept flowing with it. Yeah. Like, if people on here, that's like, that little white piece. These niggas know what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, I still have it because I wasn't done completely at the event. I just kind of like, okay, Did I'm a good stopping point. 
Yeah, they were asking yeah, about okay, it. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I still have it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that one right there, I was just yeah. like, oh my god. So then you must be the other one. When I was talking to you, and I was like, look at this. This is beautiful with all the art with the glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna change this for okay. <laughs> So now I need them to see you. Uh, okay. We're talking to him now. Okay. So, hey. Hey. Okay. Tell everybody how you got the art crew and about uh, your medium and what's going on. Oh, uh, well, all right. I'll take this one. So basically, okay. I went to school for animation mainly because I wanted to mix, because like most of my childhood, I wanted to do something with it. Being that, you know, my bad. <laughs> but um, being for the Bronx. You know, you kind of have to survive. That's like the rite of passage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that little bit. And then um, I kind of always wanted to do entertainment. So I used to write sketches. I used to draw. So I used to try to make my own little comics. So I kind of always been in that field. So, like, when I was at my job and saying I don't want to do shit no more, um, I started looking at my little talents, which was art and entertainment. So I tried to mix it in with animation. But along the way, we had to do, like, cricket drawing and sculpting and all this other stuff. So I find these other different mediums. So I kind of started leaning towards that. So I kind of started doing fine art. So I started from a drawing background, started doing a little bit of painting. Then I, I met uh, Amara and Velasco, maybe about 2019, doing some of the art shows and putting myself out there. Um, we started Arku, and in that time, I kind of been jumping around. So when you ask me my medium, I have worked with everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, do you get cut a lot? Um, I do. I get cut. I get burnt. Um, even though I mentioned a tool, like even sometimes I grab it. Like the other day, you don't see it because it kind of healed up. But I kind of grabbed it the wrong way and burned myself. So I got it's part of part of part yeah. of art. Okay. Art, art could be I mean, if you ain't burnt, you wasn't in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know no chef that ain't got at least one of them uh them stove burns oh, yeah. from, yeah. from yeah. putting your yeah. I used to be a cook too. Yeah. Like, yeah. All yeah. All my yeah. 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 Even with the wood, I've got a few splinters. Mm -hmm. So like I've gotten I've gotten a few horrible mm -hmm. <laughs> from doing the art for sure. Okay. okay. Amara, let's get to you. Hey, beautiful. Hey, I'm well. <laughs> so I seen her at the Bonfire Art Cruise Smash uh -huh. and I didn't know she was, you know, uh -huh. in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was with my cousin. I was like, Yes, ma'am. Fuck the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I would say that, but for me, it's fuck the adults. Oh, yes. That's where I have a problem. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, every every Monday and Friday, we talk about teachers in mm. some kind of way because teachers somehow make it on make it make sense. <laughs> It's yeah. a second. Okay. Yeah. And teachers end up on, bruh, I got fired. So <laughs> we tend to talk about teachers mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, as a teacher, mm -hmm. are you an art teacher? No, I'm not an art teacher. So um, I was an English teacher. So I taught reading to underserved populations of kids who get to high school and they don't know how to read. Oh. So I would get kids in ninth grade that don't even register on the Lexi level, meaning like they couldn't even read on a kindergarten level. So do you, I can't fathom that. How do you make it that far? Because we just push kids along regardless of their skill set. And uh, there's a lot of broken systems in place in the elementary schools and the middle schools. And by the time a kid is in third grade, if they don't know how to read by third grade, their odds of even making it past the seventh grade reading level as an adult is like, it's low even for that. So yeah, it's, it's sad. It's sad. It is because, I mean, if you watch my show, you guys know how much I'm into reading. Um, I believe reading is fundamental 
Uh, I have a book club. Uh, I am my bro- my brother. My son is currently reading three different books. He's reading the fifth Harry Potter book. Mm. He's reading the second Hunger Games book. And uh, one of our uh, listeners sent his book. He's an author behind Magic and Dreams. Mm-hmm. And my son is reading that. My son is 11. Oof. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, you know, I am very big on reading. I cannot fathom in my mind how a person can get through life and not be able to read. Mm-hmm. It, it just, it, I've, I've, I've never met a person who can't read. Or if I did, yeah. you might have. Oh, if yeah. I did, uh-huh. I never knew. Yeah. The average adult reads at an eighth grade reading level. <laughs> if you don't have to, you, you don't. You don't. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's, there's other ways to get past through life. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. You could, if you could see recognizable things, you could recognize what a stop sign yeah. is without mm-hmm. reading stop. You know. Mm-hmm. But so, <laughs> yeah, because that, that just blew me off. Right there. Y'all know me. I'll be like, damn, y'all fucked up. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. So, what is your medium? How did you get to our crew and all that? Tell us about you. So, um, I'm a big history buff. I study culture, world religions. Um, I'm into a lot of a lot of. I think Alex knows I'm into a lot of a lot of weird shit. Um, but uh, I'm very deep. I'm very deep. I'm a I'm a Pisces Sun Scorpio Moon. So deep. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So um, I'm actually, actually sound like a nickname too. So that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That sound, it sounds like an anime character. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just actually finished. I, I I stopped teaching reading. I'm now going to be teaching what I love to teach, which is history. Um, and I'm developing. So it's actually at the college level. So um, I'll be teaching. It's it's going to be high school kids, but they're taking college level classes, and I'm teaching those college level classes and things that I'm actually interested in. I'm developing curriculum, so um, I integrate a lot of what I study academically into my art. So I do mixed media. So I do hand cut collage on top of charcoal sketch portraits. So I use a fine charcoal dust, and I do portraits of. Various types of people, historical figures, people who stand out to me that have shifted culture. That's why, like, my art brand is No False Idols. The concept is we shouldn't idolize anything that's outside of us. No false idols, only real idols. So it's not idolizing people, but it's recognizing the greatness in those people. So um, I incorporate into the collage a lot of mythology, a lot of ancient history. So each piece has its own story and its ancient mythological origin. So I incorporate a lot, incorporate a lot of what I teach into my art. And um, I just recently got into the breaking glass wave. So I've, been, I've been inspired by my brothers. Uh, so I broke, I, I broke a mirror. I know it's bad luck, but I ain't having no bad luck. Yeah, I broke a mirror for my most recent piece and you definitely get cut. Mm-hmm. I had on gloves, but even like with the gloves, it was like still getting yeah, into I my fingers. So yeah. Get all the little practice, Everywhere. And I got excited too. I laid the mirror out like on a chair and I slammed it with a hammer and the glass shards went everywhere. No girl. <laughs> Like, the out. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. That's Alex piece. knows I like guns. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Florida. I'm a country girl. Yeah. We it's strapped. Like <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing art my whole life as a little kid. I've always done it. You know, my dad said he always noticed that I was always drawing something, always doing something, had my head in the clouds. My dad wanted me to be an athlete. And uh, he knew the day he gave me a baseball glove and he got it for me for Christmas. And he was like, you know, this is that legendary day you wait for with your kid. You go catch a ball. I put the glove on backwards. And that's what he knew. He was like, yeah, nah, nah. So, yeah. So I, I've always kind of been head in the clouds, always thinking of I got movies in my head and just always been creative and took it seriously as a business probably about. I moved down to or up to Atlanta in 2018, and that's when I really started to take it seriously as a business. So it sounds like all of you guys kind of migrated to Atlanta yeah. around the same time. Yeah. Like you all. In 2013. Okay, yeah. so yeah, okay, okay, because I've been here since like 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so how did you all actually come together? What what brought y'all in the same area in the same room together that you were like, hey, this is this is something we need to do? Personally, I think it was a pandemic, really. Honestly, mm-hmm. like like yeah. um, because twenty nineteen, like once things started to open up, like how she it's mentioned, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Sorry about it. But um, like the first art show, mm-hmm. I think that came out that I was able to do was literally somebody's song. Like mm-hmm. it was, and I think that's why I met Amara mm-hmm. and some other people. And then um, Whitehall, uh, we met you later. Yeah, Whitehall. Yeah. Whitehall. Yeah. Whitehall. Whitehall. No. We won't. We won't disclose. No. Yeah, we know what you're talking about. Yeah, nah. We won't. We won't disclose. As artists, if you were talking to somebody who was trying to come up in the game, how would you tell them to get their art seen and out there? Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's what I think it is. Like, I think, um, like a lot of stuff that we met at was kind of that it was us putting itself out there and kind of just showing yeah. it like we was kind of still getting known so a lot of it is you got to put yourself out there like you if there's something there just put it out there. you don't think there's any real shortcuts to it to be yeah. honest i mean social media presence is huge you know mm-hmm. get your work out there that way and if you're in atlanta yeah come out you know engross yourself with the art culture out here and that's how you make connections mm-hmm. and stuff like that and then, I mean, your work is good enough that you get recognized yeah. and then, you know, they'll open doors for you that way. Yeah. But just be consistent with what you're doing and, uh, yeah, be consistent yeah. with what you're doing. And, what do you guys um, think about the people who put the art at the different restaurants? Like, you know, you go to the Oz Pizzas or you go to the Edgewood Pizzas yeah. and you see the art on the wall there. Do you think, I've, I've always, I, that's just my question in general because mm-hmm. I see it mm-hmm. and I'll be like, wow, that's a really dope ass. You know, painted a picture on the wall. Yeah, Yeah. I I wonder if people are really buying art off of the walls Mm -hmm. in locations like this, or if they just think it's something that's for art. My experience has been I haven't been as successful with that. I do have my art up in a couple different locations around the city, and I've had a couple people inquire about it. Um, but I mean, for me, it hasn't really worked out because for me, it's like. I like to explain my pieces and talk to people because when people buy the art, they're really buying a piece of you. Mm-hmm. It's it's when they talk to and connect to you and the story behind the piece and you as an artist and the energy that you put in it, that's what they're really buying. I really haven't sold anything from a location because I haven't been there to, to mm-hmm. talk about the story behind it and meet face to face with a person and discuss. So me personally, I, I think it's good. Um, I think it has its advantages just from a cultural element and an impact element of like, you know, I have my art on display in a couple of different places, but as far as actually selling the work, um, for me personally, it hasn't been as successful. Yeah. I'll I'll kind of say the same thing here too, because I guess it depends on on that location also. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, like she said, you kind of want to explain your piece to individuals who are interested in. And if you're not there at the time, it's kind of difficult to do so, you know, but I, I always say ex- it gives you exposure regardless, you know, so as long as your contact information is, you know, displayed along with that piece, mm-hmm. I think it'll definitely open doors for you. Yeah. Uh, something me and Alex were talking about yesterday when we were telling people that you were going to be on here was that uh, a lot of times with the art scene, people who aren't as uh, well versed mm-hmm. in the history of art. We can't name any real big artists, black artists. You know, the first one that comes to everybody's mind is Basquiat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you wanted to inform people on folks that they need to be looking at, people that they need to, you know, the history of art, mm-hmm. who would you tell us that we should be having them on our radar? Well, I could tell you living ones that you need to check out. Um, Kevin Williams, who's uh, I'm, most of them are based out here, which is even I'm making it more local, so y'all know. Um, Charlie Palmer is another one y'all need to check out. Kirby Young is another one to check out. Like there is a lot of art history here, um, but but it's you gotta look for it. But there are are tons of artists. Uh, as far as history, I could name 
Yeah, that's like, <laughs> yeah, his true love right there. He's like especially into art. the community of all but, aspects um, of things. Yeah, there is. Yeah. But I'd say especially um, anybody who is interested in learning a little bit more history and you could actually track a lot of artists from there is Kevin Williams and Charlie Palm. Okay. They're okay. definitely the biggest biggest ones out here. Okay. Especially Kevin Williams, because um, especially for like what we're doing in artists, for any artists who think about entrepreneur, he did it by himself. And this is in the time where Black artists were being shunned. And he was able to create his own little art empire doing his own thing independently. How about you? Who do you who do you look to or who would you want more people to show recognition to? To be honest with you, like I don't follow many artists. You know, growing up it was just, you know, I was just good at drawing and then I kind of took it on that way. And now I'm engrossed with the art scene. I also um, you know, I see a lot of artists that are doing beautiful things, but I try not to not that I don't want to support artists, but I don't want to get influenced by artists, mm. you know, mm. where it shows within my work. I kind of want to have my own mm. style. And I, I think sometimes, you know, it might not be intentional, but you see some stuff like, oh, man, that's dope. You kind of want to try it, but you kind of have to be careful. You know, I kind of want to maintain some originality in what I do and with my approach. So quite honestly, I don't think I'm the one to really kind of, you know, yeah, educate you on art He's culture. He's like that like rapper that. when you be like, yeah. what's on your playlist? And he be like, I listen to that. So I'm, I kind of take the same route as Velasco. I really don't look at many other individuals per se. I do look at movements. Honestly, the most, the, the type of art that I look at the most is ancient art. So I look at, you know, different temples, what they have on their walls. I look through, I collect textbooks. So that's where a lot of my collage imagery comes from. So I go through the textbooks and I look at uh, different ancient art from different periods. Um, I am a big fan of the Harlem Renaissance. So I love looking at the multidisciplinary art of the Harlem Renaissance. I do feel like we are living through another Renaissance. And that's why I feel like in that time when we met, it was like an explosion and we could all feel it. Everybody felt it in, in the, in the art community in Atlanta. And it really, it re I do believe that we are living through a time that is going to be a pinpointed historical period of a renaissance. And I think it's important that while we're living through this renaissance, that we live in the moment of it and embrace it. Because people who lived through the Harlem Renaissance didn't know they were living in the yeah. Harlem Renaissance. It's, it's, it's a, it's a so. force for the trees type of mm -hmm. uh, situation. Um, I've said a couple of times that I hope that I'm part of the the documentary of Atlanta yeah. that I've, I've imprinted enough into, or by that time mm -hmm. I've imprinted enough. Um, I'm very curious to see how the history books are going to talk about 98 through 2016. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, when my grandkids pull that book, I'll be like, ah! You know what I mean? Um, uh, one of the things that really was beautiful to me was, you know, the Good Times picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That just sold uh, for like Eddie, 50 Eddie million. Yeah. Yeah, Ernie. Ernie Ernie and it brought in one of the highest uh, uh, totals for a black artist. Okay. Why do you guys think, and I, I mean, I know what I'm, gonna say, but I'm, mm. I'm trying to give you guys an option. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> where the focus is. I know. Black, <laughs> black artists is, is popping. Black, anything is popping. Yeah, but, but, but why, <laughs> why do you think it is that our art doesn't get the same recognition or our artists, I mean, we can talk about Picasso and, and Da Vinci and all, but we can't name off those same people for us. You know, um, one thing I've noticed about all of your stories is no one has said anything about art school. It sounds like well, all of you, school, you did go to yeah, art school? I, I, okay. didn't, I didn't graduate art school, but I went to so that was, that was, that was going to be my next question okay. then. Do you think it's it's something to do with now 
now. People feel as though you have to have that artistic background, that education to even get certain places. Like, why is it that we don't have soup cans pictures that everybody <laughs> paying attention to? How we have, like, just walking around y'all event, I was telling my cousin, I was like, this is so pleasurable for my heart. It is. I, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, to see all of these black people I think and I their no, no, you're good. To see all these black people with their images on out of their head. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I Why at the end of the day, it's just exposure. Like, like, it's just we don't get the exposure. A lot of it is, is now because they're allowing it. I think it's the same reason why things like Black Panther were so pivotal. Because a lot of people didn't believe in it. A lot of people didn't believe black art could do the same thing. And now that you're actually seeing that it's actually happening and that, that a lot of those people are taking themselves, because even in our world now, because I'm, I'm starting to learn people on the final art side, that um, there is still a lot of limitations. There's still a lot of it, but there, there are artists that actually do it themselves. And it's kind of one of those things where if you don't do it yourself, it's like any other industry within America, especially, you're not going to get that exposure. And a lot of it is that at the end of the day, it's just we, we're not put out there. It's who's in the powerful positions yeah. because art is a business at the end of the yeah. day and who's in those powerful positions in those higher up art rooms. You know, when you go to a high end gallery space, it looks nothing like what our events look like. Nothing. And um, it's everything's very political and very strategic. Same thing if you work, if you go into a Fortune 500 company and you look at the board, it's the same thing with art. And that's why I stress the importance of as artists, we can't be so naive to not embrace the business side of things mm -hmm. and the other aspect I'll, I'll add to this is if you look at any any artistic period was inspired in history was inspired by African artists mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like for example a lot of people don't recognize that Pablo Picasso was inspired by African cubism and so a lot of times it, it's consistent throughout history yeah, that Western white European artists were inspired by black art throughout the world. Can I add something to your list? Because I know you asked earlier about like artists. Um, I would also say focus on galleries because there are a lot of galleries that do focus on black art that don't get exposure. So like you got Zuka Gallery out here, you have um, Future Gallery out here, mm -hmm. you have Hidden Gallery out here. There, there are galleries out here that if you really want to support black art and look at black art, um, they're there. They just, they just need that support. They just need people to go there. Fellas, that's a dope date. Uh, yeah. Man, I've been trying to stop taking me somewhere. Man. I don't date no more. Sometimes I take these hoes to places where you're not to get in their face. And like she said, you can't even talk to people. Yeah. Uh, man, man listen. It's a real dope place yeah. to walk around. You get a chance to hold hands. And I've been like, trying to tell. Like, damn. I've been trying to tell men. <laughs> y'all need to come to the art show if you are a single man <laughs> y'all need to come to the art show no for real no no no, no. we have I, like every time so like every time when we had the the boy the boycott fundraising art show and some of the east atlanta dudes came by they were like there's so many queens in here. <laughs> I've been trying to say, you going to see some of the most beautiful women yeah. you've ever seen in the city at our events. And I be, I try to tell, you know, I'm in a relationship too. So it's like, I try to tell, you know, my homeboys, I'm like, man, listen, <laughs> y'all need to come. Y'all need to come to the art shows. Yeah. Like, do you? I see some of the cutest couples coming there, yeah. some of the baddest bitches coming there, and I've seen it pick up. Like I've seen the date night uh, theme kind of pick up on this, and I've seen a lot of single men start coming in there, and I'm listening <laughs> to the conversations, and they'll come to the door and ask because y'all always have uh, like body painting, yeah. And but so it's almost like it, it's not you know crash like mm -hmm. stripping, <laughs> but you can see the. Just the fulfillment or the enjoyment. And I don't think they really recognized that that was going to happen at an art show. But it's just such a curated event, and it's so much more than just yeah. art. Oh, yeah. Cool. So y'all yeah. definitely come out for date night, and I, I like to talk to the couples too. Hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to throw this out here. I don't know if y'all heard the part of the show where uh, Raw Moments called in. Has it, does anybody follow Raw Moments? Do you guys know who Raw Moments is? Uh -uh. No? no. Okay. I, when we go on break, I need all of y'all to follow Raw Moments. <laughs> okay. Because I think. Y'all like how y'all did the bonfire smasher. Mm -hmm. I think a art crew 
Raw Moments mashup would be amazing. Mm. Now, Raw Moments whole thing is about body positivity, sensuality, um, you know, the beauty in sexuality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, she does a lot of tantric touch type things, but even though her shows might have a sexual aspect to them, they're still very artistic. Okay. The next one that she has coming up on the 29th of October is ABC, anything but clothing. Mm -hmm. So okay. people are supposed to come with, you know, and see y'all are all <laughs> artists. Y'all yeah. all kind of ways yeah. to dress and watch me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the artist was like, I can't come out the house naked. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, no, we want you to come in like feathers and whips oh, and chains and you know, yeah, yeah. like making yeah. costumes, yeah. but it's yeah. not clothing. And then my mind is like, our Kuwaiti, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So when they go together, I want my ticket to be in different colors. Yeah. 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 I want the first. I want to be the first one in the building. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> real quick, before we go on the break, I want everybody to jump into the mic and tell people where they can find you. This is your opportunity during the break to go ahead and follow them. Um, make sure you are supporting them and get art in your house. I have yes. a, a couple of different artists from Atlanta in my house. Shout out to Bravo. Do y'all know who Bravo is? Y'all heard of Bravo? Mm. Is, this, is that yeah. Johnny Bravo? Yeah. No, Bravo. not Johnny Bravo, just Bravo. Journey, no, just Bravo. Then I don't know. I show to yeah, you. Oh, Journey, uh, but um, I have I have some <laughs> art in my house by Bravo. Uh, shout out to Sweet Sheba Baby. I have some of her art in my house as well. Uh, pieces of Gin. I have some of her art in my house as well. And then JJ, by the way, mm -hmm. I have some of her art in my house by uh, as well. So uh, I'm definitely into um, black art and supporting, and of course. When I get some money, I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> I promise y'all, when I, I got a list of shit. <laughs> you go and get when I get some money. Uh, <clears throat> but go ahead. Start with you. Tell okay. everybody where they can find you at. So, well, our main page is Art Crew ATL. So, Art Crew ATL. It's real simple. Um, we are in the midst of the planning phases, so we're on a little we're on a little hiatus. When we come back with our next show, um, we'll announce it on our page. We do encourage people to put notifications on so they're the first to know. Our spots for our shows fill up really fast. So, um, if you're interested in the show, we always have the link in our bio to sign up for the show. Um, my personal page is No False Idols. And N-O-F-A-L-S-E-E-Y-E-D-O-L-Z. Um, post a lot of my art, culture, history on there. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. As she said, follow Art Create TL. I always give a shout out to that. But my personal IG is Velasco.VMW. So V-E-L-A-S-C-O dot V-M-W. And uh, I post most of my work on there. I'll be honest, I'm not super active on IG, but <laughs> He's a ghost. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Keep it trolling. Keep it trolling. Your daddy on IG. Yeah, he crazy. He crazy. <laughs> Brown first underscore artist that's D A N E Brown like the color the number one S T underscore artist and I am super active on this. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't see me on this. Are you single? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, I just asked him because he smells like stability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to let people know, hey, ladies, he smells good too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Your wife bought that. <laughs> She's like, hey, Ron. <laughs> my nose. Stop telling these hoes he smells good. That's why he washes his balls. <laughs> This is All Hustle, No Fear on Hits 92.3, the real definition of internet radio. When you get back, I'll be right here. That's what's up. Hey, shout out to all my truckers out there. Hey, y'all. Y'all know I'm your mud flap. <laughs> I got your back, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> What's up to all my Delta Bays? How y'all doing out there? Making <laughs> all of them other folks feel inferior. That's right. Fuck spirit. <laughs> American Airlines don't go nowhere. <laughs> Shout out to all the Delta Bays that's walking down the concourse and that's on that dog on International and uh oh Shout out to the Delta Bays that's going to be working in that new concourse with all of the celebrities. I'd be, I'd, I'd be a Delta Bay to work in the celebrity uh, one. Because as soon as I see him, I'd be like, Dre! Is that Aubrey? The guy that's hiding his kid from the... No, I'm sorry. Okay. Y'all, here's our commercial. We go on the commercials. We go on the music. If you want to play your music on the show, you already know what to do. Hit up artcrewatl.com. Y'all got that com yet? No, no, no. Okay. But hit up artcrewatl on Instagram. <laughs> Their link in bio is there. Or all hustle, no fear. We'll be right back. We're live, y'all. Wake your ass up. It's time for All Hustle, No Fear. Go ahead and click the live and watch the behind the scenes or see the whole show the way it's supposed to go on YouTube or Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook at Hits92.3 or watch us on YouTube at All Hustle, No Fear. But the best way to do it, baby, is to have me in your ear. So that's right. Download the Hits 92.3 app and listen in. We're about to get started from 7 to 10, Monday through Friday. Hey. Shit with my friends. That's it. It's all right, we're back, we're back, we're back. And in the building, we have our crew ATL. Yes, we have the trio. Uh, for everybody who's been watching lately and has been asking, yes, my earrings are dope. Thank you very much. You can get them with Sweet Sheba Baby. Okay, she is uh, on Etsy. But if you want to get a discount, you go to allhustlenofear.com up at the top. There's this place that says sponsors, click down, and then you have all the sponsors for the show. For the show. Sorry, my tongue is fat. Sweet Sheba, baby, you'll get a 20% discount off of uh, anything that you buy off the site through through me. If you go to ratchettees.com, that's on my page as well. Those are the ones that say uh, never sold pussy. Yes. yes, if you need a never sold pussy shirt or NSP never shirt. Uh, I'm giving it away. Um, it, it was a donation. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, then you can get those as well. If you use the discount code Hood Unicorn, you will get a discount on those as well. Uh, if you need tickets to Art and Spark. You can get those. Go to artandspark.com, and that is available through hoodunicorn.com. And last but not least, if you need tattoos, see, there's a lot of art on my page already, right? Yeah, yeah. You're just, yeah. You're just, you just, yeah, your art is with your yeah. Your art. yeah, it is. <laughs> Mouth art. <laughs> She's a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, if you need tattoos or anything like that, you need that poke therapy, you can definitely book your appointments there as well. And that's with um, uh, uh, um, Studio 219 Inc. And they are artists as well. I, the reason why I love Studio 219 Inc. is they're not just going to put the little thing on you and trace it. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to draw it out there yeah, first. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're going to hand draw it. So I, I love that they are artists. Um, actually, the owner of Studio, uh, Studio 219, he was the person who put me on Family Guy the first time. I had oh. ne went to college together. <laughs> uh -huh. Never seen Family Guy. We were sitting there smoking our ass off. He's like, watch this. And I was hooked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hooked from there. He got me on, yep, he got me on Family Guy. And he's also uh, the maker of It's Not Porn If It's Painted. Mm -hmm. So when y'all see those pictures of, uh, you can see like a, my favorite one is it looks like a card, like a, the Queen of Hearts or whatever, and it's a heart, but it's a coochie. <laughs> I've seen that one. Yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't be on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can't repost that one. Yeah, yeah. But he got another one oh, with a girl with some J's on, mm -hmm. but she bitten up. Yeah. <laughs> I be looking at his art like, bro, as soon as he kids out the house, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's all over. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so let's get back to the art. Um, 
how would you guys like to change the Atlanta art scene? Like in the next, let's say 10 years from now, when we look back, how has Art Crew ATL changed the scene for Atlanta? How have y'all impacted it? How have y'all brought what you do to everybody else? What do y'all see for yourselves? What's going on? Um, well, I think one of the goals, like like we had mentioned before, is to maintain a level of professionalism within the art community and also make sure that artists get that. And we haven't started this yet, but get that training in the business aspect. So many times as creatives, we just let that fall through the cracks. And unfortunately, that's why a lot of us don't make it to the higher levels. Um, so having an impact in that aspect. Um, one of my personal goals is I would like us to be able to get national, international, get to that level, um, have some, you know, art crew in, on the islands, like yeah. on a beach, like, you know. The bottom line is like, as long as our reputation is, you know, they move with integrity. They treat artists with respect. Um, we create a, we created a place where there's not those levels of dominance hierarchies that you get in a lot of art scenes and in the, even in the night out nightclub scene. Um, so that we've created a place where kind of everybody's on an equal playing field and it doesn't have to be as political. Um, that's my personal goal with Art Crew. Anybody else yeah. want to add input? Yeah, on, along those lines, yeah, just be artist centric, you know, with, with our events. We all vend at our events like an artist as well. So, you know, we don't just look at it from the business aspect. So we're there as an artist and we, you know, we just as other artists want to sell our work. You know, we still paint, we still have our merch. So we still want to do stuff as artists, but we also have to focus on the business aspect of things. So, you know, artist empowerment is like, you know, we want you to know your worth when you when you go to events. And stuff like that and if it's not serving you you know i think you should look elsewhere like if you come to our events and you know you don't feel like we're executing to your liking you know we constantly trying to improve you know but if you constantly come to our events and it's not living up to your standards then you know by all means that I, I do think that feedback is necessary for us to to improve so you know we we're open with artists we ask artists at the end of events you know how did you do you know and we also want artists to tell us how we could improve as well because we're constantly trying to be better for artists, you know, throughout Atlanta. And like she was saying, we want to hopefully within the next year or so, neighboring states, you know, mm -hmm. possibly having our own um, venue space, you know, and then, yeah, definitely tap into the, the Caribbean a little bit, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. We, we, we do have plans. Miami. <laughs> do, you, do you see the way her face look when you said Florida? Yeah. We go into Miami. Yeah. <laughs> not, not that part. Of it. <laughs> uh, Thomas, do you have any input on that? Um, I do. Uh, I, I actually like the local aspect of it, but one of the things that I've really been thinking about is is that idea of kind of being a funnel. Like, like I think there's a lot of underserved things. Like, um, you know, we had made a post a while ago about being like the underground Atlanta mm -hmm. scene. And, and that's true. Like there, there is like two different scenes. Like there are some people who are being seen and others who hasn't had the opportunity. And I like that aspect. I like being that, that in between, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Where these people actually have something where they could show and, and hopefully outgrow us. Cause I think everybody should outgrow us. Yeah. I think we, yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're a startup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whether you are artists, like to get to that next step or whether you are an entrepreneur to hopefully one day actually be able to establish your own business at a place, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I want us to grow more in that mm. and be that. So one thing that I have heard from you guys around, and it collectively sounds like it's the business of it as well. It's not just mm -hmm. the creative, but it's the business of yeah, it's it. A balance it's a balance. Of Where do you yeah. feel as though artists are falling short as far as the business? I, I definitely get the professionalism of it, uh, but just as creators, where do you see there needs to be holes filled? What what do you want to shake and scream at somebody like you stupid? No. <laughs> the first is professional communication. If you if you can communicate effectively and respectively and respectfully, you can go a long way. Mm. Um, too many times I run into people who just don't know how to communicate effectively. Um, 
we get crazy DMs, crazy emails, and a lot of times like that makes just get yo. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We get we get messages that are just like yo, hey, no follow up, and it's like I hate to say it, but it's like I'm not gonna respond to that message. Yeah. If you leave me an unprofessional message on the page, I don't even want you a part of the show at this yeah. point. Yeah. I'm gonna delete it. And then, in addition to the communication, I also believe that. Um, people need to do a better job of establishing and legitimizing their, not only their brand, but their business, their artwork. Um, they need to be legitimized, especially with um, the different strongholds we see being put in place by the government when it comes to small businesses. People really need to have it together. You need to be legitimized. Um, there's too much risk if you're just walking around just collecting cash and cash app and you're not actually, you know, taking inventory of the money that you're taking in and yes you have to you have to you have to pay taxes and you yes. have to get those tax documents together and you need to have a formal business bank account and you need to you know you need to educate yourself on more of these legitimizing um elements because then you're 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 a sitting target and you're you're never going to go anywhere substantially if you don't legitimize um I think that's those are the two main things for me. The other thing that I'm seeing a lot of is too many people are selling the same thing. People see the the success of vendor events and see the success of vendors and they come out and they all sell the same thing. Everybody's selling crystals. Everybody's selling crystal jewelry. Everybody's selling skincare. And, and that's fine if you sell that, but you need to stand out. What's going to make you different? Come up with an innovative product that nobody else has designed. And so... And it's the same thing with the art. I see a lot of people who I can tell they're following the same YouTubers on, you know, how do I do a portrait? How do I do this? <laughs> Painted by numbers. I can tell there are people who Painted do who do come into the scene like they want to make art like everybody else. Make something unique. Stand out. Really sit with yourself and things that a lot of times we get online and we want to scream about channel that into your art instead of channeling it into a post or channeling it to commenting. So for me, that's what I, I really, um, that's my advice I can give the art community as far as where we need to kind of establish ourselves a little bit better. Uh, something that has happened in the news of late, and we were going to talk about it today, for, but you know, we had them. Um, Kat Von D is in trouble. Mm -hmm. And she's in trouble because a uh, customer came in with a picture from a artist and had Kat do it, do it on, it on them. Issue, and, yeah. the, and the artist is claiming, well, this is a trademark issue mm -hmm. because that's mine and I've trademarked it. Mm -hmm. And the question becomes, well, this case will set a precedent mm -hmm. of is this okay or not okay to put someone else's art on yeah. your body without their permission yeah. and so i want to ask you guys that question and then subset that with the whole idea of like chris brown was it chris brown who used the artist's work and used it as his as his um um cover, cover art, art mm -hmm. but didn't actually give credit to the artist I think this falls in line with what you mean by the professional legitimize yeah. and legitimizing. How do you guys feel about that precedent? And how do you guys feel about Chris Brown and him? His whole thing was the artist was like, damn, you could at least tag me. And he, yeah. Right. He yeah. was like, what is tag? Like, why should I have to tag? Why do I have to do this? How do y'all feel about this? Right. Those situations? <laughs> a lot of it is like that. Cause I, I hear, um, even, you know, you name those specific things. That's actually a big thing with photographers. Cause mm -hmm. photographers get a lot of that. Um, like if, like I've heard it with like people with murals and you know, the same thing, like somebody would take a picture or somebody has taken a picture from somebody and use it as a reference and don't tag these artists. So it's kind of an ongoing problem. The first time I heard it with tattoo, which is very interesting. Yeah, I don't know how to take that one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I will say like a lot of times, because I have reached out to certain people too, because I, I use references in my work. And a lot of time, all they want is that credit. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this is their work. Mm -hmm. All they really want is somebody to reach out to them to say, Listen, I want to use this, and, and most of the time they're going to say yes. And if they don't, then move on. But like yeah. it's, it's most of the time they will, because that's that is 
as an folks. artist, yeah, and as an artist, it's kind of like I I could understand that. Like if this is my work that I put my labor into, yeah. this is something that I I put my effort into that I I'm using mm-hmm. to kind of help me elevate to somewhere like and to use my energy, voice. Yeah. So you it's know? it's it's very tricky, but a lot of times I say just just reach out, just reach mm-hmm. out, just just talk to them and, and see where it goes from there. Because it really could be just that simple. The tattooing, though, that's weird. Yeah. Because, that, because I don't even know how you would blame Kat Von D. If somebody comes in with a picture saying, like, if they come in with a picture of their their relative, right? and they're like, do the relative, well, do, you, do you, like, say it's a professional photo, so does the studio be able to... Well, actually, that we talked about that mm-hmm. on the line of... Because of, I think photography is a little bit different, but, yeah. okay, so LeBron James got sued Mm. by a photographer because the photographer took a picture of LeBron. LeBron then posted that picture on his Instagram and the photographer sued him. Mm. Now, the photographer's thing was, I took that picture. I own the rights of that picture. LeBron is like, it's me. me. (laughs) (laughs) But guess who won? The photographer. The photographer. Yeah, there's so, another case on that too. Yeah, yeah same thing. So they so yeah. using <laughs> photos of photographers, and they're like, "It's me in the photo," but he's like, "It's my photo." Mm-hmm. You know, I right. took it. It's yeah. crazy. You I, don't own your image. Yeah, at least not in the public space, I guess. Right. But there are people who do own their image, and artists, do, especially portrait artists, you need to be careful when you draw certain people in their likeness. So I'm not going to say who the celebrity is, but I did a drawing of a celebrity, and I was I was literally shocked. She DM'd me. And she said, peace, sis, please remove my likeness from your artwork. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, okay, I would add that, though. Um, trademark your stuff. Yeah, yeah trademark, trademark your stuff yeah. and be careful with likeness. I mean, with most people, you're good, but some people, you yeah, know. Yeah. But it, I guess my question, too, is like, okay, so you're in the moment as an artist and you're inspired, right? Who thinks to pick up or to exactly. oh, figure out, oh, yeah. can I draw this picture of this person? Like, I think that's the that's the separation between the artist and the management. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you're not gonna do that. Even at that level, though, like there there is a way to use stuff if, if you know that the likeness is not great, mm-hmm. but you would have to learn that. And, oh, okay. Okay. I draw an ugly picture. Ain't nobody gonna come back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good. I'm sure. Yeah. I but think. I I think one thing you want to be careful of, so like, let's say you, and I'm just using Drake as an example. Let's, Drake. Drake, let's say you draw a picture of Drake or you paint a picture of Drake. What I would advise is I would advise not to tag him in it. And I would advise not to use the hashtag Drake because a lot of times that's where those celebrities find things, especially if you're selling it. So like, if you're like, you know, one of one for sale, like link in my bio, yeah. then that's where yeah, you run into it. That's what I did, yeah. unfortunately. And that's how I, cause I was selling it in the post. I said I was selling it. I tagged the person. I used the hashtag of the person who's always on Instagram. It's one of those celebrities that's like always on Instagram. And so she saw it. And she reached out to me, and she was like, "Pieces, okay. remove my likeness." <laughs> and I was like, "Say less, it's gone." <laughs> mm-hmm. And a lot of artists do celebrities too, so it's crazy. Yeah, but I did reach out to a photographer one time because I wanted to use her work, and you know, it was easy. I was like, "Hey, I love this photo. I kind of want to do a piece inspired by it," and she was all for it. She's like, "Go ahead," and she's like. Yeah, she's yeah, like, thank yeah. you, because no one else does. They just, like, snatch my stuff and yeah. start, you know, yeah. painting it and my stuff friend, like that. They so. just want credit. They just want the love. They yeah. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. This, is, this is what you do. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what's up. up. That's mm-hmm. what's up. Okay, y'all, we have one more station break, and then when we get back, the next question, I want you guys to think about this. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we do behind the scenes, so if you're on our live, we do behind the scenes. We can answer some more personal questions or things we might not want to say up here. Uh, we talk shit in the background. <laughs> but um, what do you want to do next? Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, who would you want to work with? What would you want to do next? What What would you like to be known for? You know, the, how we talked about the hot when you when they was doing the Harlem when they were in the Harlem Renaissance era. Do we think those people really were trying to say, hey, I want to be the next Dizzy Gillespie. I want to be the next, you know, uh, 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 James Baldwin. I would, they, they weren't looking for that. But we have this beautiful thing now that we know that we could 
we could eventually do that. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be seen in the eyes of history? Mm -hmm. You know, because when you are a creative, you are essentially leaving your essence behind. You know, if you are a person who never creates something, never makes something to leave behind, then I don't think you think like this. But I've I've definitely thought to myself with all of these, we're on number 302 episode. And that's after I started counting. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I was doing episodes for a whole year before I even started counting. So we're on like, really, we're on episode like 500, 400, 500. Mm -hmm. These are 400 episodes that my children, my grandchildren can watch on YouTube or Instagram later. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Felicio. (laughs) Grandma, wow. You know what I'm saying? So then the question becomes, what would you guys like your legacy to be? So I want you guys to think about that and we'll talk about that um, when we get back and we'll also talk about what's coming up next for our crew and uh, what's happening in ATL. Um, I'm going to play short songs, you guys. I'm playing short songs because I want to come right back. So did we play LAF We did. Uh, you know that's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. It's, it's quick into the... Yep. Uh, just inside my car. That's four minutes. It's a four minute song. Yeah. That's a lot of yeah. <laughs> you know what? We'll play Dubs of Hash. He got two minutes. Yeah, right. We're going to play Dubs of Hash. Y'all, this is Dubs of Hash with Rosewood right here on All Hustle, No Fear on Hits 92.3, the real definition of internet radio. What's up? What's up? What's up? We back. We back. We back. That was uh, Dubs of Hash with Rosewood. So when I left, I left them with a question. And I, as we were talking in the background, we came up with another one. But um, let, let's start with this. How do you want your impact to be seen? When, when all of this is said and done, when you have left this earth and, and we talk about you in, in the reverence, you know? Uh, uh, what do you see? How do you how do you see us speaking on Art Crew ATL or just individually? I'm gonna take a bit of a cop out, mainly because I don't think my legacy, if there is one, is up to me. I don't mm-hmm. think what anybody says about you is up to you mm-hmm. at a certain point. But I will say my personal goals is to make that connection in between, like I said, for for these different structures <laughs> as far as in the art world and everything else but for me personally i kind of do want to grow like even though we do the art shows and i love the art shows and i think we are providing a, a specific service that's not there um it is it's unstable to do that consistently mm-hmm. you have to find something a little bit more stable for yourself so mm-hmm. for me personally i am trying to get into that that world that i talked about that fine art world and trying to do that and and Honestly, from there is whatever whatever people take from it. I know what I put into it, so I know I do want like my art. Even though I jump around everywhere, it's always structured in culture. It's always structured in tradition, and it's always structured in, in history. And I always want people to realize that because I feel like once you realize that, once you realize the strength of tradition, you realize the strength of culture because that's all we are. Your perception is the culture that you're born into a lot of times, and and how you go into it that once you start getting that, that people could find their own way. Once you start finding who you are, you could structure everything else in your life. So at the end of the day, that's all I really want people to get from anything that I do. That's why I want people to get from the art that I do. And I think the most is to get the most eyes on it and also find stability for myself. But yes, that's that's the main thing. That's beautiful. How about you? (laughs) Yeah, same here. I think, you know, I'm kind of going to let history speak for itself in terms of my personal art, because I feel like I'm still experimenting with stuff, still trying to find my way, still trying to find more stuff. Like with the fire stuff, I just, you know, I saw my brother Dan doing some stuff. I was like, okay, that's pretty dope, but I want to do it with the open flame. So I'm still kind of experimenting with different mediums and stuff like that. So, you know, in terms of my personal stuff, I'm just learning along the way, and I'll kind of let history speak for itself on that. But in terms of art crew, I mean, definitely, like Dane said, you know, kind of like a stepping stone because we're not like a high-end gallery. That's not how we present ourselves. We're more for up-and-coming artists, you know, trying to give you that exposure. My hope is that, you know, five, six years from now, you're not still doing art crew. 
you know, my hope is that you've grown beyond. Still show us love, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, definitely come through, come through and support. You know, hopefully you're buying a ticket and not a vending spot, you know, because, yeah. you know, you've made it beyond that. You know, you've maxed your potential where you become bigger than, you know, art crew, you know. So that's my hope for all artists coming in. You know, we definitely want to provide you a platform to kind of get your name out there, get your exposure. And, you know, in hopes that you do become bigger and, you know, move forward. And we're always here to help with that. You know, we're pretty open. If there's any questions artists have, you know, feel free to inbox us to ask us questions and we'll help with the best of our abilities. We're still learning as we go. But um, just with the art scene, I kind of want artists to take a little more control, you know, of, of their brand when you speak of art shows. Because I feel a lot of times um, with art events, people are coming at it from the curator aspect, you know, business aspect. We're coming in as artists as well as the business aspect. So sometimes it's like, oh, how could I make this so successful for me as a curator versus the money, you know, versus how I can make it successful for artists, mm -hmm. you know? And I want artists to recognize that, like, you know, is that show benefiting you? Is that show serving you? So, you know, just be a little more aware of the events that you do and make sure that, they, yeah, they're serving your purpose, you know? Because a lot of times, you know, yeah, the curator might make his money, but are you benefiting from this? You know? Well, one thing I want to add, um, because one of the things that I, I'm thinking that ARCU does, and I and, and I hope it to be bigger, is is to create that community. Like even even though, like I said, I want people to go out of it, I still want it to be our community. So even if you're not doing the shows, I want ARCU to be uh, some, one of those beacons where where you could come here. <laughs> like yeah. there it is. A safe space. Yeah. And it really you know, is. I don't know if y'all realize yeah. like. Well, I'm just from you know, being an outsider and watching y'all grow. Y'all have created this place, this safe space. And yeah. I see a lot of like return vendors and return uh, guests that come through. And even the new guests that come, it's this sense of, um, wow, like what's yeah. going on? Like what is, especially when you're moving, moving to the uh, Monday Night Brewery, yeah. that, that's a more caucastic crowd. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and they yeah. come in there yeah, and it, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> It is. It just is. But it's, don't say nothing. They got the nastiest wings. Uh, <laughs> we don't eat their wings. We have the uh, vendors. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brilliant. I know. Yeah, for one reason. Only. If you're drunk, everything tastes good. Yeah. It don't matter. <laughs> but I just look. I like to see the growth in this just a little amount of time. And I think that because you guys are consistent, you guys have established this thing that is um, it's huge. And I don't know if y'all recognize it. I didn't realize y'all were only been around. For a couple years, yeah, I thought I came like ten years into the game. Yeah. Like that's how big. I thought y'all were like bonfire as well. I thought y'all were like running around in y'all seventh or eighth. No. Yeah, and that I just was. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. Oh, I just, I just found y'all. As I was talking, I'm realizing I think I, I might not have been to as many shows if y'all have done. But I think I might have came in on one of the first or second or third shows, like yeah. one of the, you know. Yeah. 2020. Well, yeah. November 2020. So it was like towards the end of the year. So, yeah, that's 2021. So a year. Yeah, y'all better. Year and a half. <laughs> no, I think that's cool, though. I fuck with it. Y'all are uh, genuine people. So I fuck yeah, with it. I, I like it. I like it. Definitely. How about you, Amara? What, what are you looking for uh, to be your legacy? Well, I think with the legacy of Art Crew, first of all, is so we started right in the midst of the pandemic in 2020 when people were there was a lot of still a lot of fear, still a lot of um, angst, a lot of animosity, a lot of division, a lot. I mean, you know, I keep tell I, I tell my students all the time I'm waiting for the aliens. <laughs> like I went at this point. I'm waiting for the aliens and then they still gonna make the kids be virtual for school <laughs> so um in in a world that is just it, it is increasingly chaotic and that's why i always parallel what we have to the renaissance because everything is so chaotic but it's like we have i hope people remember art crew as like we were that one place of peace and relaxation and a place to get our minds off of everything going on in the world a place where it's like we we haven't had one fight at our shows we haven't had one like our, <laughs> our shows i mean it's so it's so, <laughs> it's so peaceful like
like really people come in and the energy is just overwhelmingly positive and supportive. And it's not like when you go to the club and everybody's standing around on the wall, like trying to compete with each other. And that's not at all what it is at our show. It's like, I see people come in with that rough exterior, like, oh, I need to come in and I need to be this. And then they come in and it's like, you know, they're, they're, it's like they relax, like they physically relax and then but they leave. party different than drunks. <laughs> Yeah. And for my personal legacy, um, I, I'm really big on the importance of the children. That's why I work with children. Um, so for my personal legacy, I really want to shape culture um because we're i believe we're in a point in our culture that while we're living in a renaissance i think culturally we're in a dark period mm -hmm. i think we're in a dark period because we're i see the state of children and i see how lost they are and i ask the older generations like is this normal for them to be because i feel like every generation we're like oh the kids are so lost yeah. da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. but you know I, I have the pleasure of working with people who've been teaching children for 30 some odd years i come from a long line of children or a long line of teachers and um my, my grandmother was a teacher. I asked her the same thing, you know, and without a doubt, they all say, nah, this is different. Mm -hmm. So I think we are at an alarming period where we need to start shaping culture or we are going to be in a very dark place in the future. Mm -hmm. So any, any small impact I can have on that, um, even if it's just within my community, that's all, that's all I'm looking for is just shifting culture and, um, people remembering art crew for being that place where you could come and be yourself. And it was a place of peace during the midst of chaos. We were the, the order that came out of the chaos. So that's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Um, what's next for art crew? What's next? Where can so, we find you guys next? What's 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 the what's you know what's the next date? Yeah. We're on our hiatus right now. <laughs> so we take a hiatus once a year where we take about one to two months and we really sit down. We go over our plans. Um, ironically, summer's not like our booming period. Winter's our booming period. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's it's oversaturated right in the summer. Everybody everybody's outside. Everybody's yeah. doing something. Yeah. So winter yeah. winter time. We want to be outside too. So. <laughs> yeah, and we do. And this is a time you know we really take time to reflect spend time with our families vacation all that um plan the next steps because we really we really are trying to reach the next level with things and we put a lot of time and planning and intentionality every show is different we have different themes different attractions we don't want everybody to come to each of our shows and get the same experience like we are, we're looking into what else can we incorporate how can we make things better for the artists and the vendors what are some different venues that we can utilize um even amping up the ones that are the fan favorites now, like the things mm -hmm. that we've done, we're trying to make it bigger next time. We're not trying to yeah. just, you know, camp out on that and you know, make it so, regular. Yeah. So we'll be back in September. We don't have an official date solidified, but as always, we will post it on our page. We send out our email blast from Eventbrite. So if you've ever purchased a ticket from us, you'll get that email blast from us. Um, you'll be the first to know about our events. It's always Lincoln Bio, Lincoln Bio, Lincoln Bio. Um, we're, we're also on TikTok now. Yeah. The, the Chinese government getting all our information. We're, we're risking our personal data for you. Are you seeing a few more? Are you, are you, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not all, no, 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 we're not doing no challenges, but that's not, no. <laughs> I'd like to see I, I do you really think I'm going to be able to get these two? <laughs> 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 We're on TikTok now, same as Instagram, Arku ATL. Um, we're we're developing our website, so that's what's up. That's what's up. I, I really, I really do. Um, when I realized she was a part, well, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I adopted myself. She's in. definitely a part. <laughs> No, she really does yeah, make an impact yeah, because yeah. she's the first face people see when they come in. Yeah, she is very dope. And she helps to like break because people come in with that, and then yeah. she makes she cracks a joke with them. She'll be like, "Oh, why you got that shirt on? What that mean? Oh, where you from?" And it automatically like gets people relaxed, yeah. and yeah. they already feel the vibe of the show. So it fits perfectly. It's yeah. perfect. Awesome. Um. So 
I, like I said, I kind of already had heard about you and knew about you, but I didn't know about you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like that. I'm here, but I don't know what this is. But I'm, <laughs> I know what this is. Yeah. 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 Um, as she really broke down what Art Crew is and how it's influenced her and what she saw, that really helped me want to have you guys here. Mm -hmm. Because that whole word of mouth thing, the whole, it's the culture mm -hmm. that creates you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You create culture, but it's also the culture that creates you. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you guys have done an amazing job of not only making sure you represent the culture, but you include Atlanta. You don't, because none of you are from here. Nope. The that, yeah. <laughs> We're the worst kind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the fact that you include but who's, who's from Atlanta nowadays anyway? Why not one out of five? <laughs> That's I, about the average. I created Atlanteans. Um but that it's it's really is a beautiful thing. Um for anybody out there who is listening, whether you are uh, all the way on the other side of the pond, because we are international, we can be heard everywhere. My folks in Ghana, my folks in Belize, my folks in um, Australia and Wales, in uh, Canada. She said Australia. Yeah. <laughs> they let me down under. <laughs> they love you. Yeah. 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 Canada, Quebec, they be liking me and everything. So if you guys are ever uh, coming to Atlanta, which everybody does come mm -hmm. to Atlanta. First, I want to say, uh, make sure you come in when Art Crew is going on. Mm -hmm. Second, I want to say, go home. <laughs> <laughs> don't stay too long. Yeah. Yeah, show. We, yeah. we don't need no more of you. <laughs> go back home. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, th this is this has truly, truly warmed my heart. Uh, All Hustle No Fear is for the culture. We are not only informative, not only uh, insightful, but we are trying to connect other people with cultural aspects that mean something to us. Art crew means something to us. If you guys ever need somebody to promote for you guys, tell people about you guys. Appreciate All Hustle that. No Fear Appreciate is that. here. Appreciate it's it. definitely yeah. here. Um, I would love for you guys to contact Kells and maybe find out about, we don't have... Well, I had nothing on the wall. Mm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We could use some real dope ass. All right, artists, you hear that? That's an opportunity. They need some art on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Wait, don't get me in trouble. I'm going to get shit in here. I'm going to get shit in here. I'm going to get artist when he pulled out something from when he was like in high school and it was all just little dots oh, points Stippling. 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 Yeah. just yeah. just little Spice dots mm. and I, I was like but you're talented yeah. mm. oh, you know like i'm attracted to that I'm, I'm i don't need a regular person i need somebody who does something <laughs> extraordinary you know a little different so you know with that being I'm attracted to all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm attracted to all of you guys. You are absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, here at All Hustle No Fear, you guys always are welcome. Our door is always open. As you see, you guys can come on. No questions asked anytime you want to. And always let me know what y'all got going on because I'll tell the world. Okay? Uh, thank you. I'll tell the world. Thank you for having me. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Um, you guys, we got to get out of here. 